Hi, I decided to do another Christmas story. This is called Ordinary Baby Extraordinary Gift, and it's written by Gloria Gaither. And she's a very old woman now, and she has written songs with her husband, Bill Gaither. And this one also came with a cassette. Remember I told you once before about what cassettes are? It was a little square. Um, Aha, I have one here. I see it. I'm going through some old boxes. This is not, this does not go with this book. This is something else. But um, that is a cassette. You would put it in a player and then you could hear it like a CD. Okay, extraordinary baby, extraordinary gift. In the beginning, God and people were best friends. They were glad to see each other whenever they got together. And when they went for walks in the beautiful garden God had made, they laughed and told each other secrets. They shared everything, and no one was embarrassed or shy. I feel like I read this one before, so it might be a repeat. I know there are some other repeats, because I'm a grandma and I forget. One day, a stranger showed up in the garden, a jealous and selfish creature, and he disguised himself as a beautiful, colorful serpent. He coaxed the two people to break their promises to God and to ruin the wonderful friendship between the people and God. Afterward, whenever God came to enjoy his friends, the people were ashamed and acted guilty and afraid. It was as if God and his friends had become strangers and no one to introduce them to each other again. God knew everything had changed between them and could never be fixed unless a miracle happened. From then on, God tried to get messages to his friends about how sad he was to lose them and how very much he loved them. He wrote, I miss you, on the sunset. That had been the time they took walks before. He pulled at people with gentle breezes that felt like the way the wind blew when they ran together down the garden paths. He hoped the people would remember how close they had been to him. Over the years, more and more people were born. The mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers passed on stories to the children about how God had been best friends with the first man and woman long ago. How they talked and sang and laughed together. The stories seemed almost too good to be true. God was so great, so powerful, and so far away. But some of the people were told story, who told stories were special listeners. But I gotta reread that, that didn't make sense to me. But some of the people who told stories were special listeners. They said they could hear God trying to talk to people. They said he wanted his friends back and that one day he would fit, find a way to fix the friendship the lying snake had destroyed. The people guessed at how God might do this. Some thought it could be, if they could be good enough, God might be friends with them again. They tried to, so hard to be perfect and to keep all the rules they thought would make God happy. But being perfect was way too hard. The people always went to bed at night disappointed in themselves and sad because they knew that this was no way to get to know God again. The listeners said God would send someone to introduce people to him again so that God's people could get together with him in a place they called God's kingdom. You ever try not to do something you know you're not supposed to do? Like, 
eat candy when you're not supposed to or touch something you're not supposed to. Be unselfish. It seems like sometimes the more you try, the harder it is to do it. Do you ever find that? The people talked about what kind of person God would send. The special listeners said God would send a descendant, which is a child or a grandchild or great-grandchild of a king. That would make him a king too. What kind of king would God send? Certainly they thought he'd be a more awesome king than Saul or Solomon or even good King David. He'd be more powerful than the leader of an army. He'd be more rich and fine than the family who lived in the best house in town. For centuries, people waited and wondered. They came up with all kinds of ideas. Some got so tired of waiting, they decided the whole story about God was something someone made up. But it wasn't. One night in a tiny, tiny town, God kept his promise. And he didn't send someone to introduce people to God. He came himself. And he didn't come as a king riding on a white horse or as a rich man dressed in fancy clothes. Not that this is fancy. He didn't come as a president or a governor. He didn't even come as a grown-up. How did he come? How did God come to earth? As a tiny baby. No, God had planned all along to come in a way we could understand. He chose to come as a baby, because no one would be afraid of a baby. He knew children might be shy if he came as a grown-up, but no one can be shy around a baby. Now children grow, could grow up, not in his shadow, but beside him. Like the first people in the garden, children and God would know each other and not be afraid. The angel's telling the shepherds the good news that a baby was born in Bethlehem. So when it was true, God came himself. He was just an ordinary baby, born in a simple barn to a loving mother named Mary and a strong man named Joseph who made things out of wood. Instead of important-looking doctors to help this baby be born, there was just Joseph. Instead of a story in a, the newspaper, a real star in the sky stopped over the barn and twinkled in the clear, dark night. Who would have ever guessed it? God thought of the best way to have his friends back. He would be an ordinary baby. That's the way he planned it. Maybe so that we would come to him and not be afraid. He was just an ordinary baby. That's the way he planned it. Maybe anything but common would have kept him apart from the children that came to rescue, limited to some elite few, when he was the only child who asked to be born. I think this is the song that was on the cassette tape. And you know what? You can probably ask Alexa to play it. Ordinary Baby, Extraordinary Gift is probably the name of the song, I'm guessing. And he came to us with eyes wide open, knowing how we are hurt and broken, choosing to partake of all our joy and pain. He was just an ordinary baby, that's the way he planned it, maybe so that we would come to him and not be afraid. Here's Jesus working with his dad, Joseph, as a carpenter. He was ordinary, with exception of miraculous conception. Both his birth and death he planned from the start. 
but between his entrance and his exit was a life that has affected everyone who's walked the earth to this very day. That's because everybody on earth has to decide, do they want to be a friend of Jesus or not? And if you want to be his friend, you've got to tell him. With no airs of condescension, he became God's pure extension, giving you and me the chance to be remade. He was just an ordinary baby. That's the way he planned it. Maybe so that we could come to him, so that we could come and not be afraid. I hope you enjoyed this book. Ordinary Baby, Extraordinary Gift.